Our next speaker today is Howard Wolfman. Howard's with IEEE, or the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Thank you very much. And hello, everybody. Are you out there? Hello? <laughs> OK. Um, I, it's a pleasure for me to be here today. I'm really excited about the opportunity to, to sit and talk, or stand and talk, probably a better explanation. Uh, I, I've got an, a history and standards that goes back many, many decades. We won't go into the details, but uh, I've been involved in IEEE standards. By the way, I'm an IEEE volunteer. I'm not a staff member. Uh, I came from the industry side. I also now am a part-time academic. But I've been involved not only in IEEE standards, but a little bit in ASTM work, and then quite a bit in UL work and CSA work. So I cover a breadth of standards work. A uh, little bit about the IEEE. The IEEE was formed in about 1960, roughly, 59, as a merger of the Institute of Radio Engineers and the American Institute of Electrical Engineers. Today, the IEEE has over 400,000 members. That's globally. Half our members are in North America, and half our members are in the rest of the world. We operate over 1,300 annual conferences. We're probably the world's largest publisher of technical information with over 3.5 million technical documents. And we have members in 190 countries, and that demonstrates our, our global position. Our standards are enjoyed by consumers and companies around the world. Uh, you probably recognize IEEE 80211. Anybody have Wi-Fi? Without that, you wouldn't have Wi-Fi. Or Bluetooth, uh, FireWire. The UL Environmental Sustainable Product Mark is based on an IEEE standard. So these are pervasive. They cover a breadth of, of areas. Uh, we mentioned the internet. We, we also are involved in the power side of the world, uh, networking standards. We even get involved now in patients and care delivery and monitoring equipment. The IEEE has a board of directors, and the particular parts I'd like to focus on are the Educational Activities Board and the Standards Association. These two together operate an IEEE Standards Education Committee. And the Standards Education Committee is just that. It's to provide education and educational information, educational opportunities about standards anywhere from the pre-college level to the college level to the graduate level to the industry level. And as part of this, uh, a team of standards uh, employees and volunteers about two years ago visited many universities, not just in North America, but all over the world, to sit and talk with department heads and with professors and find out what they're doing in terms of bringing standards into the curriculum and what the IEEE can do and assist in that area. Uh, we are globally recognized as a standards developer. We have over 900 active standards, more than 500 standards under development, and out of our volunteers of uh, 400 million, we have over 20,000 standards development worldwide. We are open in membership for standards development. You do not have to be an IEEE member to participate in our standards development. And we follow the WTO, World Trade Organization, uh, principles for due process, which means you have to have a defined process for developing a standard, openness of standards, where they're open to anybody who wants to participate in development, reaching consensus on a standard, which means you address anybody who's unhappy about it and address why they're unhappy about it. You don't have to give in, but you have to explain why you're not changing your standard if they raise an objection to it. We also have to have a balance so that industry or academia or any part of industry cannot override what everybody else is doing. And then there's a right of appeal if somebody is really unhappy and they think the process wasn't followed, they can appeal this to our standards organization. Our development process is fairly standard. Somebody comes up with an idea. Uh, they develop a, recognize a, a sponsor within the institute, get a project approved, develop the draft standard, have a ballot, standard reports approved, publication, 
and then you revise, reinfirm, or withdraw the standard every five or ten years. Now, how about standards and the engineering student? Well, how, how many here are undergraduate students? How many are graduate students? So it looks like we're basically all undergrads. I got to ask this question. How many are double E's, double E students? How many of you belong to the IEEE? Well, the rest of you, you damn well better join. <laughs> uh, but standards are very important in everybody's life. And many educational institutions don't really focus on standards. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was involved in a conference of professors on the Capstone Project for Senior Devel Development. And we were talking about bringing standards into the capstone projects. So why is this education, standards education, important to you as students? Because you need to recognize the key role that standards play in engineering technology, the computing field. And incorporating standards in the curriculum benefits students and faculty as they face design process challenges. Uh, provides tools for learning about standards. And of course, the knowledge of standards can help you make the transition. Eventually, you've got to make this transition, right, from the classroom to professional practice, be that in industry or in academia. And other parts of the world, other, other disciplines would also profit from standards work. So we have something called the IEEE Standards University. Uh, it's being developed now. We have multi-track projects, a three-year plan. We're working on this. And one thing I do want to mention that's, that's important is we provide grants. We provide grants to students uh, working on projects so long as they involve IEEE standards or possibly other standards. And if you want to learn more about those grants, uh, contact our staff folks whose name and contact information is at the end of this presentation. Speaking of that, here's where you can learn more about IEEE standards. Uh, our IEEE Explorer, and I suspect the university has a subscription to that, so you can probably get it through the library. If they don't, they should. Do they have a subscription? They have standards, but not the program. Okay. Uh, then you can also learn about it our, our standards portal, IEEE Standards Select, and Get Program. And these are the names and the contact of the folks that you need to talk to. Susan Tatainer or Jennifer McLean can tell you more about the student grants that we have. And I thank you very much.